There we are. Okay, that was very strange. Hello, everybody. Uh, there's a new little thing that comes up there that uh, uh, I don't know if it's Facebook or if it's Zoom has there about going live and and uh, somehow it was about the recording and this, that, and I must have hit the wrong thing. So I went out and I had to come back in. So not sure if you saw me or didn't see me. Anyway, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm Audrey Young, and this is Audrey Live. And it is February 10th today, Thursday, February 10th. And thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, the sun was out today and we're in the plus degrees here up in London, Ontario or near London, Ontario. So it's a quite mild and a lot of the snow is melting and we've got puddles everywhere. So um, I think I'd rather have just the snow than all this dirt and puddles and stuff like that. But anyway, it, it is a lovely day out there and uh, very wet and I guess good for the ducks and the birds and things like that. So thank you for joining us again. We have a great day today or a great show for you today. We have Anna Marie Oak and Jill Fitzhenry, aka Jilly Bean on the show for you today. Uh, and they're going to share some of the things that they've been up to lately and also a uh, sneak peek into their projects for Art Weaves Live Spring Show. So lots to come and lots more as well. So make sure you post where you're from uh, and comments and questions and things like that. We love to see where everybody is from. Uh, also, we have a few door prizes today. Jill has uh, offered a few door prizes. So um and that will be open to those who make comment or ask questions and we'll randomly draw at the end of the show. So make sure you ask some questions and comment uh, so your name will be put into the draw. Also, um, please share this. We would just love to share it with everybody uh, so that your friends and your, your crafting uh, buddies there and family um, can join us as well. Uh, to see the show. And if you've missed any of the shows, you can always go to our YouTube channel, which is Pin It Canada, and uh, all the videos are there uploaded so that you can check out uh, um, any of the shows that we've had in the last, I think we've been almost two years now that we've been doing it on and off. So that would be great. Uh, just a little note about the Art Waves Live Spring Show, just a reminder that it is April 26th to May 1st. So we still have a couple of months to go. Uh, there's 40, over 40 amazing classes and workshops. And we got some incredible teachers, um, some that you might have never been able to take classes with. And uh, this is a great opportunity for you to share in that as well. So uh, please go to our website, www.c2c events.com and we'll post that in uh, in the comments there as well to go check out the catalog and all the classes uh there is a registration form there so you can just fill the registration form and email it to us and there also is an online registration so you can uh register online and and that way it gets it directly to us uh, also we have a special promo that we've been doing and let me just share this with you <laughs> so for the first hundred registered, which we were getting close there that sign up by February 14th, uh, you will qualify to receive a free mystery package. Uh, and some of those things will include uh, items that we'll, we will be using at our kickoff party. So make sure you register by February 14th, which is Valentine's Day and Monday, uh, so that uh, you can qualify to receive a mystery package. So we hope you take advantage of that. And the reason for that too, so that we can get the numbers in and the information into the teachers early so that they can start sending you all the information about your class um, and that communication can start. So we want you to register early, uh, get it in by February 14th, and that way you will receive a free mystery package. So we're looking forward to, to that and the kickoff party. Uh, Anna Marie, actually, who's with us today, will be doing a make and take at the kickoff party as well. So one of the items that you get in your mystery package uh, will be for that uh, make and take with Anna Marie as well. So there you go. Lots of bonuses for registering early. So just, just do it. Just go online today, tomorrow, this weekend, and uh, get your registration in. So perfect. Also Monday, of course, is Valentine's Day. That's why I'm wearing my red 
read today to uh, for Valentine's Day. Um, and for many, it holds a different meaning. You know, for some people, it's uh, about taking the day off and spending it with your loved ones, going out for dinner with your sweetheart. And for others, it could be just a relaxed meal with old friends and family. Let us celebrate love with our family and our children and make the day all about creating wonderful memories with our family. Uh, creating a family tradition is always great as well and celebrating it together. Uh, a few suggestions that I found that were kind of neat. Uh, if you have children or grandchildren or even for your husband or whatever, uh, it says post-it note love. So place post-it notes, uh, love notes in your child's lunches or on a mirror or in their shoe or on the television, just to let them know that you love them. Because, you know, sometimes I think they don't realize how much we do love them and care for them. Uh, I love you meal was another thing. Make a Valentine's Day theme meal as a family. Make a heart-shaped pancakes or sandwiches. Set the table with fancy dishes. Um, my favorite is a heart-shaped cake cake. Uh, my daughter has one of these heart shaped things and just to make the cake and decorate it up um, for a dessert, maybe with a little bit of ice cream uh, is a great way to celebrate as well. Um, also some Valentine's decorations. I really don't usually decorate too much for Valentine's Day because I mean, it's only one day, but it does laugh. I mean, we're supposed to share our love uh, throughout the year. Um, but I did find from DecoArt, they had uh, just a quick little video about some quick and easy Valentine decorations, but really they're decorations that you can use all year long. You can just leave them out. So I'm just going to share that video with you a minute here, uh, as long as I can find it. <laughs> so here we go. And I'll make sure I put the sound on this time because last week I forgot to hit that sound thing. So enjoy if you hear decorations from DecoArt. So there you go. There's a couple of great ideas, quick ideas. And sorry, some people seem to be having a little bit of problem with the sound. So I did take my ear sets off. So hopefully, Rhonda, can you hear me now? <laughs> Denise, hello. Nice to see you on too. And Rhonda and uh, Brenda. Yes, Brenda says she registered this morning. Thank you, Brenda. I got your registration. Uh, so great uh, for that as well. So I know you'll enjoy your classes. So anyway, hopefully you'll take some of those ideas from DecoArt and, and make some your own, I guess. Um, and uh, enjoy your Valentine's Day with your, your family and friends. Uh, also, Valentine's Day is always a good time to show kindness to each other. And believe it or not, next week is also what they call the Random Acts of Kindness Day is February 17th. So uh, midweek type thing. So uh, you can approach this day as a family as well, collectively choosing acts of kindness to complete together, uh, such as taking out a neighbor's trash, cleaning up their yard, which right now would probably would be 
for some of you cleaning out the yard, but others might be shoveling driveways. Um, encourage family members to complete random acts of kindness within the home for other family members as well. Oh, Rhonda says she can hear me now. Denise can hear me. Hi, Barry. F from Mexico. Well, that's nice. Wouldn't that be nice to be in Mexico? Hopefully you're having great weather. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Barry Peter down there. Um, anyway, so random acts of kindness. Uh, it actually started... Um, in California at a restaurant, a lady named Ann Herbert wrote on a placemat words that have never been forgotten. And those words were practice random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty. And that went on to become bumper stickers and apparel and just a, uh, they made it a day, a random acts of kindness day. Um, so celebrate that on February 17th. Um, also check out Tracy Morrow and Deb Antonick uh, have a Facebook uh, group or page called the random RAK or the random acts of kindness Facebook group. So check that out. There's lots of different ideas there. And I'm sure if you just Google it, there's all sorts of things out there as well. So I did see something um, this uh, this morning on Facebook where they actually just put a heart and put on the heart. You are loved and put a couple of chocolates in and I thought, and then a little baggie. And I thought, isn't that a great idea? Go for a walk and just, you know, give them to people you see or just drop out your neighbors. So another great idea. So. Anyway, that's just my, my little tidbit on Valentine's Day and random acts of kindness. And like I said, that's why I'm wearing my red today in celebration of love and, um, and giving and kindness. Uh, and I think more than ever, we kind of all need that right now. <laughs> And I'm not going to go there. That's for sure. Uh, you know, yeah, there's lots going on right now, but that, that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we have the amazing, incredible Anna Marie Oak and Jill Fitzhenry on the show. A little bit of Anna Marie. She is from Corner Brook, Newfoundland, where she has been an artist for as long as she can remember. She was a nurse for 38 years, working mainly in the Alzheimer unit the majority of those years. For Anna Marie, creativity is a way of life. She is a Dynasty brand specialist, Pebio product specialist for the past oh, over five years, as well as a deco art helping artist, are just a few things that are in her artistic palette. Uh, Jill Fitzhenry, as many of you know her as Jilly Bean, uh, she lives in Savage, Minnesota, and is also a Dynasty brand specialist and teacher coordinator. She is also a deco art helping artist travel teacher. Uh, let me let these two in as I'm talking about them. There we go. And uh, she is a travel teacher and a past president of the SDP, which is the Society of Decorative Painters. For the past 40 years, she has produced hundreds of designs um, that are available as pattern packets, books, and videos. Hello, Anna Marie and Jill. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello. Good morning. I was going to say, Jill, we can't quite see you yet. Let's see. Well, I've got it on. I think it's just slow. Ah, okay. <laughs> into, I've got the video. Goes <laughs> it on. That's crazy. Let's see. That's okay, Jill. Took me two hours. My camera. There we go. There we go. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I just love these two cheery ladies. There's always a smile on their face, <laughs> which puts a smile on everybody else's face. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. So nice. Now, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. I can. Okay. I can too. Perfect, perfect. So I know some people said that they weren't able to hear, and I wasn't sure if it's because I had my head, but I can hear better with the headsets on, but I, I can hear you just fine. So. <laughs> So thanks for joining us and uh, um, just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on this past year. I know both of you have been very busy, lots of new patterns and Zoom classes and things like that. So uh, maybe we'll go to Anna Marie first, if you can just share with us maybe maybe um, a positive thing that ha happened to you over the last year or so. Okay, well, one that comes to mind, I had the opportunity to spend time with Jill and her wonderful family and grandkids and her brother in Florida and Fort Myers. So we just had a ball. Jill has such a great family and she shares. Jill shares well. <laughs> and grandkids are awesome. And that was so, you know, especially after 
ch chatting almost every night, Jill and I, and we just thought it's going to come. We're going to get together. We're going to, and it was so nice. And Myrtle yes. Beach too. The umbrellas yeah. oh, on the beach in the morning. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so inspired. Yeah, yeah, uh, wonderful. And how about within your your business? Okay, well, John lots of zooms um, and stuff, and Jill encouraged me to do one actually uh, this March, and it's. Um, framed poppies and it's a, a nice piece i'm just going to put it down here so you can see probably a little bit easier and okay. uh, that's march the first i did it on a surface uh, you can do it on canvas of course but uh, you can do it on a frame and this is a dollarama picture frame oh look at that perfect perfect also at the dollar tree too in the united states they have a lot of cool frames or you can even go to a uh, thrift store, get an old picture and paint on that. So yeah, it's a lot oh, of fun. Wonderful. So and how about, yeah, good, good. How about you, Jill? What's something positive or something that was great from last year as well? Well, uh, several things. It really was, uh, despite everything, it was really communities uh, like, had a lot of zooming and uh, uh, finally got to go to a real convention in October, went to the net convention. And uh, we had a few days on the beach prior to that just to veg out and unwind, put our toes in the sand. Um, but in addition to that, um, I've been designing stencils on my Cricut. My kids gave me a Cricut machine for a Christmas present and because it was difficult sometimes to find new things, you know, during that time, I thought, well, let me just start creating some of my own. So I really have had a blast doing that, a big learning curve, uh, but it has been a lot of fun. And just one more thing to add to the creative process. So, uh, and, and when Anna Marie came from for uh, my family uh, get together before Christmas, she taught a class to my grandkids. Aww. <laughs> they loved every minute of it. And my uh, one of my granddaughters, she adopted Anna Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, and I see both of you have some uh, classes coming up, some upcoming events. Uh, yeah. Anna Marie, you had mentioned already your Zoom class. Uh, you also have a workshop coming up in, in uh, Harbor, Maine. Newfoundland. I and what are you going to be teaching at that workshop? We're going to be doing the five foot board. We did the snowman and they're going to flip the other side and do a nice spring floral one. And they're going to be doing uh, uh, the pen and inking or the brush and inking uh, of uh, the birch trees and stuff too. Like they're going to pick from a couple different things. So we have oh. a great time in Harbor, Maine. <laughs> beautiful place yeah. how far is that from where you live nine hours wow <laughs> i know i get to stay with uh, rosemary and gail and her husband gail and they have a beautiful house overlooking the ocean and yeah they, they're my hosts for there so see some have, people would think newfoundland's not that big that it actually wide. <laughs> <laughs> because i know when we go to the netherlands that's what's always so funny because i mean you can get from one side of their country to the other in like six hours that's how big the whole country is you know yeah. so it's a big island way yeah. up in the north yeah atlantic Ocean. Uh -huh. wonderful yeah. wonderful <laughs> and jill oh jill what what you have some classes coming up too some different classes and workshops Yes, I do. I have um, with uh, on uh, the creative innovations in painting. I have a let's see if I I, ah. I have a glass painting class, and the class is free. You just have to buy the packet and the brushes. Oh, perfect! So coming up March third, it'll be from six to eight on uh, um, in creative the innovations in painting, yeah, right? Creative. Yeah painting and i'm really going to go through um the different options for the different paints that you can use um you'll get a conversion chart when you get the packet um and why the brushes are so important uh using the right brush and different options so it'll be really a very informational class if you've ever been afraid to paint on glass that would be a good one uh, 
Yeah. Um, let's see. What else do I have? I have. Um, uh, Interview with STP. You're starting to do some work with that as well. I am. So they have a uh, committee that decided that it would be really a good idea to interview a lot of the past presidents and other influential artists in our industry that have been such a backbone for the Society of Decorative Painters. And so I got to do my very first interview with Brenda Stewart, one of my all time favorite artists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that'll that'll be um, on the Society uh, Facebook page, Society of Decorative Painters. Um, and let me think, what, what is it? A uh, Facebook group, I think it says. E, yes. What did I put down there? SDP. Um, it just says Society of Decorative Painters Facebook group starting in March. Right. Correct. Yeah. 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 So I think if they put that in the search, it'll, it, it will find it for sure. Yes, it'll come yeah, up. Yes, so yes. I'm really excited to uh, interview some of the other people. You know, I haven't had an opportunity, you know, in the last few years to touch base with some of these people you see every year at a convention. And yeah, yeah. Um, it just kind of, you know, got away from us. So this is great. I get to I get to touch base with all kinds of very fun people. Yeah. So and I, I don't know if people are aware, because, I mean, there is a lot of SDP or Society of Decorative chapters everywhere. But if they're not able to be part of a regular chapter, they do now have a virtual chapter. They do. And I joined that as well. So I thought that was really unique. And a lot of people might not know that, you know, that they don't want to aren't close enough to an area that has an actual chapter. But the virtual chapter is. And what's the name? Do you remember that? I'm trying to remember. You know, it, it, I think it's um, SDP uh, gathering or something like that. Yeah, last night. Yeah. Oh. We're going to have to have somebody, hopefully, that's on here, type that in because I was going to look it up and I forgot to look it up before that what the actual name of it is because I know I, I will find it. I will find it when you guys are doing demos. So then we'll make sure we tell that. <laughs> I were just talking about that last night and I was telling her I have joined um, and uh, I'm encouraging her to join too. And I said, you know, I think it just would be fun to get together with some of these ladies virtually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I know Judy Westacar Jenkins is part of it as well because she's the one that told me about it originally. So I thought that was kind of neat. So um, maybe what we'll do right now is we'll start with the... Uh, who was I starting with? I have all my information here. Jill, maybe I'll highlight you and you can just talk about your Art Waves Live classes yes. and a little bit of information there. Yes. And uh, Anna Marie will be and I will be back in the background here. So <laughs> first, I'm going to see if my overhead is going to show up on here. I think that might be the problem. You know what? I'm going to come back here. I think it came loose. Um, uh... Hang on a second. Let me just... <laughs> Just get it um, plugged in just a little bit more there. The camera is on, but I think it came loose from the computer. Let's try one more time. Well, maybe not. That's okay. I can do it this way. All right. And just, just I somebody, of course, was right on it. Thank you, Kathleen. It's called the Kaleidoscope Chapter. Oh, good, good. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Kaleidoscope chapter. So that's what you have to look for. And that is the virtual uh, chapter for STP. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> so my um, classes for Art Waves, I have the Santa Joy and then I have that uh, rose. It's called a friendship rose. And that's done on a canvas. Now, um, my classes are uh, April 27th, which is a Wednesday, it'll be in the morning. And then I have uh, Friday is the Rose, April 29th, also in the morning. And I just wanted to share with you a few things. Okay, so first of all, the Santa. Um, the original piece, uh, it was done on this from Bear With Us, which um, they are not available anymore. Now, I know that there are some other businesses that carry this wood piece, um, and I need to research that. However, I'm looking through my stash, and I had this, which is a mason jar from um, cdwood.com. 
perfect size. So that's another option for the class. So, um, and really you can do it on any kind of wood piece that you want. Um, the pattern itself is like six by six square. Uh, and you're welcome to enlarge it. I would discourage you from uh, shrinking it. I think it's easier to go bigger rather than smaller when you're working on, especially some of the little areas on his face. Um, and then I will be giving you a color conversion chart in the packet. Um, this happens to be the Traditions Aqua. Now it looks a lot different then when you look at the finished piece because we're doing um, a modeled look in the background and so we are slip slapping some uh, uh, phthalo blue in the corners and adding white and things so we're gonna uh, do that together in class um, and i'll give you suggestions for other colors for the background too any turquoisey color is going to be really pretty okay um then uh i wanted to just tell you about um let me tell you about the rose and then i'll go into some of the brushes a little bit so the rose i did on a eight by ten canvas i really would encourage you to do a canvas rather than a wood piece for this because it's going to make your blending easier with the technique that we're going to be using and we're going to be using um, an extender blending technique instead of floating color however i'm going to show you both and so if you want to go back to your floating color if you're more comfortable with that not a problem we'll make that work as well but i really would suggest a, a canvas would be good and this one will be easy all you got to do is base coat it black and then when you trace your pattern on you're actually going to um in fact I've got another little sample I'm going to show you after. You're actually going to paint the rose in with an off-white color um, and then trace your petals back on to make it easier. Okay, so and all that will be in your instructions when you get them. Um, another thing, when you do get your instructions, I wanted to show you the difference between printing it out when you have an e-packet let's see if it's going to show up on the camera here you have an e-packet when you print it out on just regular copy paper it's going to be dull if you will do yourself a favor and get some glossy photo paper to print it on it just makes that pop and it's going to give you a lot um, cleaner, brighter look. And then just make sure uh, on your printer that you set it for uh, a glossy photo paper in your settings on your printer. Um, but huge difference. So uh, the photos are really good and you're going to get really good step by steps of the rows. So I'm going to really make it as painless as possible to get through all. So if you've been afraid of painting flowers or a rose, give it a shot because I will take you through very slowly step by step to uh, really look at each petal individually and where the highlights and shadows and the tints go. Okay. That's a great tip, Jill, about the paper. Yes, for sure. Yes. Okay. So what I want to show you is, um, okay, now I, I just decided to do a little uh, uh, board here, and I really wish I could get my overhead. You know what? Let me try one more time. I'm going to try unplugging and replugging it back in. Let me just try one more time. Otherwise, while I... you're doing that, of course, we're all looking at the amazing pieces behind you and how they're just so springy, making us feel like spring. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. I got it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I just needed to plug and unplug it. Just had a that thing. <laughs> okay. So the the main thing for both of my classes. I'm going to be using the Jelly Bean Dirty Dancer, which is a double-ended uh, double-ended brush, and it comes in two sizes. Um, I really recommend uh, both sizes um, if you can. You could get by with a smaller one, but I think you're going to really like the technique. So I just wanted to show you um, on this uh, lily here a little bit of how I use that. So. 
I love the Traditions Extender Blending Medium. And for those of you having trouble finding it, I will be putting it on my website. In fact, I'm going to be carrying the entire line of Traditions. They are now, uh, in the spring, they're going to be coming out with little two ounce uh, bottles, which will make it much more affordable to be able to have you know more colors within your line i do use them right along with my americana i can mix them together within the same design so i will be going through a lot of different little tips and tricks during class okay so to start with um, i'm just going to put some white on my palette here and maybe another little color here to so I've got white in the traditions, but I'm going to use the coral blush in the Americana. I want to show you that it works with both brands. So I'll put a little bit of each on. Okay, now when I'm working on a canvas, I have a couple of choices. I can either moisten first or not moisten first. But what I like to do is I like to actually take my brush and I dip both ends in extender and wipe that off on my paper towel real well okay um i'm going to test it by moistening it first on this one to begin with and this is um actually my vintage lily packet that i have but i thought you know what i want to try it on a black surface rather than the medium white surface just to see what happens so that's what i'm doing here today i'm just playing a little bit with a, a few more colors um, so I'm just going to rub in. Now, I think one of the problems people have with extender or retarder, and you can use uh, the Josonia retarder as well. Technique will work out just the same. One of the problems is you get it too wet. And so by putting it on my blender brush, and then wiping that all off. It seems like I've taken it off, but there's still just enough to give you just, let's see if I can get, let's see if I can show the shine, maybe not. A Little bit of a shine there. You just want to shine, you don't want it real wet. Okay, so now when I go to load my uh, round brush, which is a long pointed round, I really plump that up okay and let's see i'll get a little closer so that you'll see my blending a little bit better here okay so i decide where i want to put like some of my highlights now one of the things i like about the double-ended brush this method instead of floating color I really plump the brush up with lots of paint. So I'm getting more of a solid coverage than I do by a corner load. So I'm gonna lay it in nice and thick on that edge and I'll pull it skinny. Now, while that's wet, I flip the brush over, I point the tip right at that edge and it's like I'm doing like an eraser. I'm just catching that very edge to get rid of that hard line. It makes blending so much easier. And I wanna do up on the flip part here, nice solid white. Just drag out a little bit of a tip there, flip the brush over, just barely catch that edge and see how that just melts right down in. So I can get into different areas that are awkward to get into with a corner load because I've got a nice point on this brush and I can lay that paint on as heavy as I want it to be for color on the edge and then just soften away that inside edge. And what was the name of that brush again, Jill? So this is the Jilly Bean Dirty Dancer. Yes. And this is and they, they can get that on your website, correct? On my website, yes, yes. All this. In fact, I have the entire uh, Dynasty Black Gold line on my website, as well as the Faux Squirrel, the Faux Sable, the Black Silver. I have the entire line. Um, so if you ever can't find a brush, 
take a look at my website, jillybean.net. Okay, now I want to rinse this out because I want to switch colors. So I'm going to rinse it out in water, wipe it off. But I want to continue using my extender. So I'm just going to reload extender in the brush. And then this time I'm going to pick up this coral blush color. And I'm just going to use that for some of the shaded areas. Um, normally I would go ahead and, um, you know, maybe use a gray or something to start with, but we're just going to go right for the pretty color here to begin with. Okay, so let's pick, and I'm going to, oh, and when I clean the brush in between time, I swirl the blender on my brush, on my palette, or, ah, my paper towel, swirl it, but I'm going to moisten this other petal up above here. I just want to show you a couple different colors here. Okay, so really plump that brush up with the color and now on this one I've got a little bit of a flipped edge so I'm coming inside of that flipped edge where my shadow is going to be fill it in nice and solid one of the things I always had trouble with when I floated color was that I would get it too transparent and had to go back and do another coat all the time. Um, most often I can do this in one coat. Now, also look at this big area I was able to fill in. That would have been more awkward with a corner load. Now I can just take my brush and soften that hard edge away. And for all those who do not like to shade, this is like, yes. yeah, so this, this really <laughs> is, and so when it comes to doing your rows, it really is going to make it a lot easier uh, to get all the different, because we're not just following an edge. There's sometimes we're in the center of an area, you know, we're pulling in at different angles. I actually did this. This was a silk flower. I'm not good at growing flowers, so I have to do the silk. But I, I um, took a picture of my silk flower and in order to get all the petals and the highlights, put it in a window so I would get strong highlights on this particular photo so it, it really was a nice and i did just do one at a time um I, i'll show you just one more quick thing with this brush and that is you can also do um like a wet on wet let me take out now i've got pine green here and i'll take a little bit of that out and Originally, this was base coated with um, medium white. You could also use bleached, uh, what is it? Bleached sand or bleached, uh, unbleached titanium or any of those dirty white colors uh, would be good. So this time on the leaf, I just want to show you one more option. I could actually put a little bit of extender in my green now. This is dry but now I want it to be wet. So first I would base coat it and then I'm going to come back with wet green, but I've used extender. Okay. I'm just going to blot this a little bit on my paper towel, but not clean it. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that medium white and put that in the wet area where I want that highlight and then take my blender brush and soften and then see I get a mix of color okay. so that's the way it can be used so you can use it just plain or you can do a wet on wet it's just I was constantly putting the two brushes in my mouth when I was doing this technique that's why I had this brush designed for me uh, because this way I can just flip back and forth easily with that I do clean in water in between time but then I always redress the brush in extender. Perfect. We got about a minute or so left here, Jill. <laughs> um, let me just uh, tell you one other thing that um, I just want to show you a uh, the rake brushes. I'm going to use the rake brush on Santa here. And so I've, they come in three different sizes. This is the black silver. I love these because um, I really can get nice thin lines. 
I even take the smallest one and I trim off a little on each side to make an even smaller one for working on ornaments. So I would just nip it right off and I, I can um, hand cut those for you and sell them that way as well. Uh, but let me just show you a, a quick little sample of the rake brush and why I like this one so much. Um, I'm just going to use... And this is the black silver rake brush. Black silver rake. Yes. So on your project, it's going to be a quarter inch, but it comes half, three eighths, and a quarter. And so I sell them, both Anna Marie and I sell them. Um, we, we both, it's like one of our favorites. So I just thin my paint, like half paint, half water. Okay, now... I do it different than Anna Marie. We both have different techniques and they're both really cool. Okay. So it depends on the piece you're working on. I want to be able to see all the little tips. So I get up on my, and look at how I get nice individual lines. I don't even have to smash it down on the piece. I'm using mine a little bit more controlled. Now, some designs where you want them a you know, even more fluffy, then you might want to, you know, squish it down, fan it out a little bit. But I'm using mine a little bit more controlled. But look at how I get all these nice little individual lines very easily. So, but I just would like to invite you to, um, you know, check out my website, uh, jellybean.net. I have um, a lot of YouTube videos, jellybean. Fitz Henry is my YouTube video. Um, they're also attached to my website. So you can see many, many, many different techniques, ways of using brushes. Some of them are uh, full length classes even. So take advantage of all the little tips and tricks you can. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's see. That was wonderful and great to see the projects that you're going to be teaching. Hopefully people will take advantage. The Santas, I'm a Santa gal and uh, I typically paint a lot of Santas and at Christmas time I have them all over the place and I have lots of uh, Jill Fitzhendry, Jilly Bean Santas everywhere. So <laughs> thank you for the inspiration. That's for sure. So, uh, all right, Anna Marie, let's see. Yeah. Let me spotlight you here a minute and uh, maybe you can share with us some of the classes that you're going to be teaching at Art Waves as well and a sneak peek into to that as well so I love that dirty dancer Jill I just I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm just going to put you down to show you my uh, and I hope my camera works I had a little bit of a going it's funny how you can use these cameras all the time and then when you really need them it's like ah yeah. it's not quite straight we're seeing it on the sideways Anna Marie. okay so nope nope yeah one more turn the other way there we go here we go okay there we go. this is the welcome uh tall blooms i'll be teaching this one it's thursday from 10 to 2 and it's uh, on a 12 by 24 canvas the only prep I want you to do for this one is to base coat it black uh, before we start class. And I want you to sand it off just with a sanding block and wipe it off and you're ready to go. I use a uh, stencil on this one. It's a wallflower stencil that I have too on my website. So this is a really cool piece. We'll be also, I'll show you in the end how to do a glazing on this also. So that'll be fun. The next piece, is the winter chickadee. Okay, uh, that's done on a really cool, you know, me and the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Ram, I gotta do something to that. But I initially found this piece uh, at the uh, Tuesday morning. So I brought it home and I uh, sanded off and I base coated it, stenciled and put my ribbon and greenery on it, did my winter chickadee. Um, I am selling the, the surface and the greenery and the ribbon. It's $15. You just email me. Shipping's included. I'll just put it into a mailing envelope. It works well. So that's what you'll be doing your chickadee on. I'll also be painting, uh, of course, like Jill said, we love the rakes and the black silver. 
the whole piece, the chickadee fur, uh, not feathers, pardon me, it's not fur, it's feathers. And the, the pine tree and that is done with the rake. So it's really cool the way that, uh, that that's done. So that's a cool piece. This other piece I'm teaching, it's called Waiting Out the Storm. And it's the other part of Christmas in the Cove that I teach often with the Christmas tree in the boat wintertime. This one is fall of the year, late summer, and it's uh, waiting for the storm to pass. This is inking with my uh, faux squirrel liner. And this is the brush with a reservoir. I'll be showing you how to do that in a moment. So I'll get back to that. That's a really cool piece. Um, there's my Christmas in the cold the supplement for that one. That's a pattern packet that I have uh, available. Also, the very last piece uh, I'll be doing is I took this off my back door this morning, actually. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not there. It's called Home. And I initially did it on a large five foot board. So you'll get to know how to do it on a long piece as well. You can do any color you want. And it's a really cool piece. You can do the lettering on it or not. Both ways uh, is quite cool. Hey, I'm I love to... Georgia just puts on, it's, it's now called the dollar and a quarter store. <laughs> I know, or dollar 50, right? That's... <laughs> I'm just going to show you how I did the inking um, for years since 1996. I was a certified Mary Owens teacher for a long time and done a lot of pen and inking and taught with her, went all over the United States teaching with her. So I really enjoyed that. But being a Dynasty brand specialist, of course, love the brushes. They came out with a beautiful uh, reservoir brush. And this is the uh, Bow Squirrel uh, 1827 Liner Reservoir. This brush is amazing and I'm going to show you how it works. I have them on my website, uh, all sizes, two, four, six, eight, and ten. And I have a kit designed also with three of the brushes in it. Uh, for doing this ink. And that's on special now, actually, on the website. So I lay my, I put my ink into one of those uh, shooter cups because of the height. So I can dip my reservoir brush. You want that belly to be full of ink, or uh, you can do this with watered down acrylic. It's up to you. And then I come out on the side and your brush is ready to go. Okay, so I just had a little, show you a little bit of wood grain there because we'll be doing the boat and everything there, but I'm just gonna show you how to, uh, how to do it here. Okay, I'm right in the camera. So you lay it down, you make your wood grain like your, on your old house and see that I'm bent, pushing down to make wood grain coming across, making lines. It's a very cool way to, um, to paint. And you can add as many wood grains there as you want. We'll have fun with this brush. And uh, say if you made a mistake, like if you felt that was a boo-boo, easy to correct. So what you do, you use household ammonia or Windex. Windex stains the white canvas, so I prefer to use the clear. Uh, ammonia. I dip my Q-tip, dab it on a paper towel, and voila. I turn my Q-tip around, and you can see how it takes that stain out. There you go. And why that is, is because we base coated our canvas. And for this class, waiting for the storm, I want everyone to base coat to at least two coats of white um, paint. I, I like to use the DecoArt Traditions uh, white gesso. It makes my canvas really uh, silicone feel. And in between, I sand it with my sanding block. And of course, then I take my Americana and you uh, sealer finisher, and it's the DAS13 matte finish. And you take it outside and you seal it at least three times and just leave it until you're ready to roll. So that's a cool, cool thing there. I also rinse my uh, ink 
first my ink brush into my ammonia that clears out all of the ink cleans it then I would go and I'd wash with soap and water so that is that uh, I wanted to show you a couple pieces that I did um, with my stencils because I love I love working with stencils and uh, playing with them so I'm going to these are my uh, spring hello spring designs maybe I'll turn around my uh, camera here a little bit so you can see for a minute and there we go okay here it is the hello spring the bow on his ear or the hello spring with the flowers in his ear these are my two newest spring um pattern packets that are available will be available towards the end of the week and mainly did it all with my faux sable rake the three quarter they're on my website they are awesome to use and i will be showing you the technique for that also you can see the easter eggs were stenciled using my cookie cutter or cookie and design stencils um I'll put you down here now so you can see them. They're those are beautiful. Them. I love those spring pieces. <laughs> um, no, they're really, they're really cool. They These are. are my, yeah, six by six stencils by uh, the Crafters Workshop. I have all, all kinds. But this beautiful. is a cookie and cake stencil that I love doing. I'm going to show you a little uh, quick stencil. Also, the frame art that I did on my... Uh, Make, uh, my um, Zoom class that I'm going to be doing is amazing too. This is a beautiful stencil. I'm going to uh, let's see what did I do with that? Oh, it's no odds. I can take a, this piece here, or what I'll do, I'll stencil black on that. And my cookie cutter, it's cookie and cake stencil. It's swirls. I love swirls. I love lettering. Also on my new pattern packet, you'll see how I did my lettering with my number eight black gold and my liner. I just love that as well. So to stencil, I'm just going to show you this. And you might have to bring it to the middle of the screen there if you can kind of see that. How's that good? Yeah. Perfect. OK, I'm going to use white and I use a dry stencil pro these are the stencil pros i have them all on my website they come into one quarter half inch three quarter one inch an inch and a half i like the half inch and quarter uh, i'm using the half inch today so you use a dry stencil brush don't add any water and you push down okay push down make that paint go into the center of your bread bristles as well as the sides these brushes are so amazing. They make a really nice soft, um, soft um, stencil pattern. Now I'm going to have to do it on something black after all because of that. <laughs> I was just, I was just thinking, uh, uh oh, Anna Marie is going to go white on white. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Okay, and this would be cool too. Oh, that is cool. I love that stencil. I love this. This comes in six by six as well. Now you can see I'm holding straight up. I'm going to the right. I'm going to the left, and I'm just stenciling away. Having make fun. it look so easy, Anna. Oh, it's fun, and you know if you do make a boo boo, it doesn't matter because I could even just take my um, stencil and move it a little bit. I know my uh, Halloween shoe. I did the background. Uh, there and that's how I did that I just want it to be a little a little wonky and there you go it's beautiful. now I always whenever I do that Anna Marie huh? I always find that I the the the, the um, stencil like the inside of the stencil starts moving on me well you you hold it yeah you hold it down yeah and if it moves, just go outside, but you're not, you're not, ha you don't have any water on your brush. So you're not going to make a mess, right? No, it's yeah. very soft. Wow. I that's what cool. I'm that. that is pretty cool. I think that's a new background for a new uh, pattern. 
It is. It's a brand new one. And they're from the Crafters Workshop. I have a full line of those. And thanks to Jilly Bean, she put them all on my website for me. Uh, there they are there, that one. And the art is one that I put on the writing. I love writing and things like that. I love circles, uh, swirls, scribbles, you name it. Yeah. And there's one I've got, oh, music notes and these flowers as well. It's called Thoughtful Bird. And I'm going to do a birdcage, I think, and something funky out of that. So you never know. So never for know. doing the, the winter chickadee, uh, yeah, this is a great surface for it. And like I say, it's, it comes already stenciled. This is by C.D. Wood a stencil. I sell those as well, but that's a really cool one too as well. So perfect. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, maybe I will flip you back. If you want to flip yourself back, hey, there get I all am. of us in here. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Well, that was great. I just love the different techniques and yeah. all the uh, different tips and, and things for, uh, <clears throat> for the classes coming up as well. So do you have anything else to add, Jill, that you, uh, now that you've been sitting back to think about? Well, no, I, one thing I wanted to point out is, um, in, in there again, I learned this from Anna Marie when the stenciling, I always pounced years ago. Yeah. yeah. I would sneak under. Yeah. She'd yeah. swirl and, it, and not a lot of pressure. Right. And it's really, so it's really pretty dry. So I've had a blast doing stenciling. Now I finally like it now that I know how to do it right. So yeah, yeah. But how about I'm do I wanting to stencil a bunch of placemats? Yeah. I have some canvas placemats and they're like a fabric. They're not a hard canvas. Yeah. How do you do that? Because everything's moving. So I can the only way I can seem to do it is pounce it. Like if I do that, the stencil moves, the 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 I uh, take it down entry to a, a cardboard. Or tape it on a cardboard, something, yeah. you know, and just make it stationary, just yeah. to keep it stationary. Yeah. And I'm probably going too hard, right? You think that's what you're saying, it, Jill? Uh, yeah. Yes. You see, the thing about it, it's 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 not only me, you know, using that technique, but it's the brush. This is I need fully, that brush. Yeah, it's yeah. a fully a thick brush and a soft. If you could feel the tip of this, it's just like a velour top yeah, it's yeah, beautiful yeah. Yeah, it's really good yeah, i think that's 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 the trick right there is the brush I'm so. them all on my website also for the oil rouging for the oil painting i use the blender these blenders are awesome as well for the yeah, oil rouging. yeah. so yeah, we i can remember i can remember uh -huh. the days when uh when mary owens always taught for us at the shows and you'd see all these women outside with their their spray oh, cans yeah. spraying yeah. away so i brought brought back memories anna marie <laughs> Actually, you know, I always say that she gave me my teaching skill. Yeah. I, I award her for doing. She's a great teacher. Yeah, and, and a wonderful person. And a wonderful person. She yeah. certainly is. Yeah. Well, and Audrey, I didn't know. Did you want to do some giveaways today, or do you? Oh, want yeah. Yes, that's right. We were going to get some giveaways, of course, for all these people that have been. Oh, yeah. Look at them all. Yeah. Iron Rubik. Okay. To Iron. Fabric to freezer paper. Sue Stanley just said she irons the fabric to freezer paper. Yes. And stenciling. Oh, okay. So let's get back to the giveaway. Jill has some. How many giveaways do we want to do, Jill? I actually have five. Oh, five. Oh, I, my goodness. Jill got a pile. I'm only, I only got two. I'm okay. Two. So let me see. I better get my pen here to write down. I'm just going to do the random draw okay so we have one is joyce wilson joyce wilson i have to write this down so so these first five will be from jill okay. okay let's see barbara jones barbara jones okay number three linda giesbrecht oh she's from out in uh, hi linda she's out in alberta somewhere i know that she always came to our uh, <laughs> our show out there. And okay, so now it's number four. Number five, uh, we have Susan Side Braun or Suzanne. Sorry, Suzanne Sides Braun. Oh, she says, "Can I get on the giveaways?" 
been watching and painting a project as I'm doing it. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> All right, let's go the other way. We have, yep, Brenda Owen. Okay, so that's our five. Okay, yeah. perfect. And now we have two from Anna Marie. Oh, four. I've got two brush sets and I've got, well, five. I'll make it five. Two brush Oh, my sets. goodness. Pattern packets. Oh, my. Okay, let's see. Who do we have here? We have Cat. McDonald, K A T. Congratulations, Cat. All right, and we have Donna Pultz, P U L T Z. Congratulations, oh Donna. I have to look up, make sure I'm not doubling people up here. Uh, Liz Garcia, Liz, and she's also one of our teachers uh, from our Waves Live, and Liz will be on the show in, in two weeks. Her and Debbie Ekmeyer will be on the show. So Liz, congratulations. <laughs> All right, let's see. I have two more to go. We have Anita Moran. Ah, Anita. She's another one of our teachers and she'll be on the show in a few weeks as well. And Georgia Alther, A-L-T-H-A-R. So those are all our winners. So I will be messaging them for their addresses and getting them to, to Jill and Anna Marie. So my goodness, thank you, Jill. Thank you, Anna Marie. That's amazing. <laughs> we have 10 lucky winners for watching the show today. Everyone's like, you're very generous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I want to give the pattern packet for my Zoom class, March 1st. Send oh, that. perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we're just so thankful that the two of you could join us today. It's been a wonderful show and, mm -hmm. and we've learned so much and sneak peek into your classes. So I want to thank both of you again and everybody. Make sure you check out their websites. We've posted a few times there on the uh, on the chat. Uh, Anna Marie, what's your website again? And it's www.annamarieoakdesigns.com. And the YouTube channel is Anna Marie Oak Designs. Perfect. And Jill, mine is jillybean.net. And make sure you put the I. Not it. It's not the candy. <laughs> <laughs> so J I L L Y B E A N. Dot perfect me. perfect perfect well thank you both for being on the show today i really appreciate uh -huh. it and looking forward to to many classes and zoom classes and seeing you everywhere of course <laughs> thank, you. Awesome. thank you for having us we oh, really you're you're welcome take care bye yeah bye, bye there we are well that was wonderful oh i i so enjoy those two they're just full of energy and smiles and and very very inspirational and i know everybody else has really enjoyed it as well uh the show today and all the things that they've seen so uh don't forget as well i just want to make sure that i mention again for the art waves live online show to make sure that you get your registration in by february 14th to receive that miss that free mystery package and again, uh, it'll have all sorts of goodies in there for you, but also it will have um, the piece that Anna Marie will be doing at the kickoff party, uh, the make and take, that piece will be in the free mystery package as well. So you know one thing that's gonna be the mystery package. So you wanna make sure you register uh, www.c2cevents.com. And along the top, you'll see Art Waves Live Spring Show. Just click on that and all the information is there for you. And if you, want to, you can just give me a call and we can still register over the phone. I, I still register over the phone. Uh, you can send it by email. We don't have fax anymore. We finally got rid of the fax last year. So, but uh, other than that, uh, it's, uh, you can register almost any way. Um, next or in two weeks, our next show is Thursday, February 24th. And as I mentioned, Liz Garcia and Debbie Ekmeyer will be on the show. And again, they'll be sharing some tips and some demos and uh, sneak peeks into their classes. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Um, just thank you for watching and take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And uh, till next time. Bye bye. <laughs>